Now, if you haven't watched the last video on understanding what an NFT is and why we want to build one of these things, definitely go check that out first. Link in the description. It's a fun video. Go watch it. In this video, we're going to be deploying a simple NFT. And then after we learn how to build a simple NFT, we're going to build an advanced NFT that we can build really powerful NFTs and entire systems around. Other than that, let's jump into it. Now, all the source code that we're going to be working with is in this repository right here. But remember, if you want to go even deeper and look at an even more advanced tutorial, check out this Dungeons & Dragons D&D one. There's also a blog on the Chainlink blog. All those will be in the description. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to git clone this into our code here. I've already done it so that we're all set here. And if you're not familiar with Brownie, which is the package that I'm using here, don't worry about it. Um, this works with hard hat, this works with truffle, this works with whatever framework that you're comfortable with. Obviously, you just change the deploy scripts a little bit here, but the contracts are going to work exactly the same. So that's actually where we're going to start here. We're going to look at the contracts and we're going to start with a simple collectible dot soul. This is just a simple, a really, really simple ERC 721 contract. And it's going to be as simple as, as it gets. And you know what? We're just going to ax it all. We're going to start from scratch. So if you're coding with me, feel free to code along. So First thing we're going to need to do, obviously, is choose the Solidity version. We're going to go with 0 .0 0.0.6 here because that's what I've defined. Then what we're going to do is we're going to import this Open Zeppelin package. And I have it here, so I'm actually just going to copy paste it. So Open Zeppelin is really, really helpful for spinning these up really quickly and not having to rewrite or reinvent the wheel every time. Then we're going to create our contract. We're going to call it simple, collectible, and it is ERC721. For those not familiar, this is ERC721 and Solidity's version of inheritance. So we're saying we're inheriting, we're grabbing all the functions from this code and we're bringing it into our code here. We're saying simple collectible is an ERC721, which is what we want. Then we'll make a constructor, public. And since we're inheriting the ERC721, this is where we add the constructor of the ERC721. So we do constructor public, and we do ERC721. And the ERC71 inputs are really easy, right? So we just need a name and a symbol. So we're going to call ours doggy. And the symbol is going to be dog. So when we deploy this, actually, if you looked on like Etherscan, for example, the name of this token would be doggy and the symbol would be dog. So that is how uh, you define what the names are. Now, what we're also going to do is we're also going to create a token. So the Open Zeppelin docs, or excuse me, a token ID. The Open Zeppelin docs use a counter. I'm just going to use a token ID for simplicity. You're more than welcome to use the counter. We're going to call this token counter right? Because we want to count all of our tokens. Every time we create a new one, we want to iterate by one more. So we're going to call this token counter. Oops, oops. Token counter equals zero. We're going to initialize it to zero at the start. So this is it. We're done. No, obviously just kidding here. So we need to close, close it off. But this, you could deploy this and it would probably work. So now what we want to do is we want to create a function called create collectible. This is the function that we're going to call to actually mint the new collectible. So you can think of this as kind of like the class, right? So um, in, in collectible terms, like this is this is us defining, hey, we have um, we're creating a thing and it, it's going to be a Pokemon card, right? It's going to be a Pokemon game. However, or it's going to be a um, it's going to be a, a baseball card game, or, or these are going to be sports cards, right? But this is what the genre is, but we need the actual individual tokens, right? So this is the this is the uh, this is enough to create the platform for us to create the token. So this is kind of like the NFT factory, if you will. So we're going to create a function called create collectible, and it's going to take a string memory token URI. Now I'm not going to go over token URI right now, like I said, but for those of you who want to see like a good example of the token URI, definitely go over to this D&D, um, where in the scripts actually, there's this function called set token URI, where they we made a function called set token URI. 
and we gave it this IPFS, this IPFS link, which we can actually look at it in here, and we can see this is what a sample token URI should return, right? Again, it has the name, description, the image, which is this right here, uh, which is super cute. Um, and then a whole bunch of attributes. And um, due to a little bit of duplicity, right, we actually had to put the attributes on chain and in this file, which is kind of annoying, but um, such is life. But this is what one looks like. So API call, IPFS works, needs to look like this. Um, it needs to have an image, which we also put in IPFS because that's great. It's so cute! Anyways, um, so this is going to be, um, excuse me, actually, this is going to be a public function. And we're going to return a uint 256. We're going to return the, uh, the token ID. So when we mint it, we're going to return the ID of that token. So speaking of which, that's what we're going to start with. uint 256, new item ID, equals the token counter. So we're going to have this counter in the top that iterates every time we, uh, we generate a new one. So we're going to have token counter here. And then... The ERC721 from Open Zeppelin has some built-in functions. And these are going to what we're going to use to actually mint and create these NFTs. So we're going to do safe mint. And you can go to the docs to see what this does. Um, it, it creates this new NFT, but it, it does it safely. So if there's already a token ID of that, it actually doesn't uh, allow you to mint it. And we're going to give it, uh, we're going to say the owner is the message.sender. The first uh, parameter is going to be the owner. We're saying whoever calls this function is going to be the owner. And then we're also going to give it the new item ID. So this is going to be that, that token ID that we just created here. Then we can set token URI of that token ID uh, with the token URI that we passed. Again, we're not going to do it, but we could if we wanted to. Then what we want to do finish to finish it out is we want to add one to the token counter. We're going to add one to the token counter, obviously, because we want to keep iterating every time we create a new one of these tokens. Then we're just going to finish it out by returning the new item ID. And that's it. And that's the whole thing. This is, how, this is the simplest way to create your own NFT. So we can even test this. So I have a couple of scripts that I've already written. Um, called deploy simple um, and create collectible. So it literally just deploys it and then creates it. Um, so we can even, even run those. For those of you who um, are new to Brownie and you want to uh, get it, you can just do, you know, you need Python. You can do pip install. You can do pip install f Brownie. Um, I can't spell install, but you know, pip install what, what it says right there. Then you'll also need um, Ganache and opens up on contracts, because again, this uses those opens up on contracts. Um, for those of you, again, new to Brownie, we do what's called a remapping. So even though it's, we have to do NPM to install it, we can actually remap them um, uh, like this so we can use those NPM packages. So you just need to make sure you add this in here to have it work with Brownie. Um, but after you install Ganache and opens up on contracts, uh, then you're good to go. You also, for, for the advanced ones, you'll need this, but for the simple ones, we don't need to do um, do these uh, do these environment variables. So let's try it now. So we'll do brownie run scripts, simple collectible, deploy simple. So this will deploy a simple one. Public return. It should be returns. Returns, excuse me. And what we'll do is we'll deploy, <laughs> and then it'll say the owner. So this is the owner. Um, so this is just getting a developer wallet, deploying it, and then create a uh, collectible. So you are now an artist. Well, sort of, you're a coding artist. And you're just taking your first step to learning how to deploy really awesome NFTs. Now the next video is gonna show you how to take this to the next level and create true scarcity for your NFTs. And we're gonna do it with the puppy. See you there.